in the beginning I was inventing a lot of things to uh, improvise with the students. And I started to um, feel like, well, if we're going to do jumping, we should probably do fluffing first, or somehow I was already like kind of strangled by my own pedagogy. But one summer, um, I started to notice some of the questions that the students were asking. For instance, one would say, you know that part of class where we get very subtle and very still? Another student would say, you know that part of class where we get very wild and disoriented and falling and colliding in spherical space? And I said, yeah, I, I know what state you're talking about, but what do you mean that part of class? Like there was a logic to what I was experiencing as very random. I also wrote these little drawings, these little symbols, to represent the nature of that particular state. So this was in 1990, revelation of the underscore, the beginning of the underscore. It's kind of research and a kind of play, studying our experience in dance improvisation and giving us language to be able to talk to each other about it and, and consider it. The underscore is quite different than a jam, where people are coming and going, and it's more like a social, it can be more like a social activity. And the underscore creates a very different environment, something very intentional, and something different happens in this intentional space. So global underscore for me is, is just very deliberate and, and a little bit more reflective way of, of doing a jam. So it's, uh, there are certain structures and certain ways that the experience patterns of, of the experience we, we all share during jams. And it's just having, besides dancing, having, having some focus on what's happening now, what, what, where did, did I come from? When, the, when I began the jam and how is it developing, how am I meeting people, how, what, what experiences do I have? The other thing about the underscore is that we all start at the beginning and we go through and we end together. The extra thing tomorrow is the global underscore. So far is happening only once a year and this is about maybe the 15th time it's happened. People in other places are going to also practice the underscore at the exact same time. And um, the special thing with the global underscore, we will do a small dance facing the direction of the next site to the east. I'm not going to lead this. And we will do it in our own way. Sometimes it's in with ambient sound, but we're lucky to have Mike Vargas with us, and he knows the underscore very well, and he'll be playing. Arriving energetically, we could say, is simply bringing your attention into the present moment. So you're not somehow somewhere else, you're actually here. This is not something you do once and forever. You, you get it and you lose it and you have to get it back. This does not tell you what to do to arrive energetically. It could be different on different days. Maybe sometime just looking out the window helps you arrive. A little conversation, changing your clothes, writing in your book. It's like, okay, now I'm here. So next week, arriving physically, bringing your attention into your body. You could be doing yoga or just sitting here or modern dance, it doesn't matter. Feeling your body as it is right now. I feel like in contact improvisation, we experience a lot of uh, movement and change in our mass, in our actual bodies. It's not just the body moving through space, but things moving through the body. Whether it's compression of another body, or a feeling of like the fluid of the body, or the ground, or the air, how the body itself changes state. So 
from inside the body, from skinosphere, you could say, just beginning to stretch or, or extend into the space around the body, that's the kinosphere. So the body, the space around the body, all of the different ways that you can transition and all the rolls and slides gives us options for how to work with the floor and how to fall and roll. That's the high kinosphere that's connected to the low kinosphere. So you're always able to go all the way down and start to go all the way up and have a more rain. I'm here, but I'm suddenly now really expanding. I'm seeing more, I'm sending more, I'm taking more, I'm in a bigger field. You're circulating more energy through your dancing, you're traveling, you're passing people, they're passing you. It gives you some energy. There's not much to do about it except to enjoy it, to feel it. And the body is really uh, absorbing a lot of information with that, with people passing and dropping and being around you like that. And we're kind of warmed up and ready to make connections to things. I feel like contact is a very experimental, crazy idea. I don't know of any culture anywhere where strangers, male and female, male and female or strangers come and, and touch in this kind of way. We have judo, we have martial arts, karate, wrestling. And I think the idea of doing it at the same time in different places in the world this cooperative communication between strangers in this very intimate bodily way it's it's really it's really a human experiment i think the idea is nice of course when you do something big and everybody are included it has some meaning it's true it was more focused whenever people less talk they they can be more concentrated on the body so of course it's beautiful I'm always wondering how many people really think about these little signs while dancing. What's the very interesting and the most essence energy of group and this uh, focus, which is like very not tense, but very relaxed and open and it's rather connecting focus, uh, body and people and space. And uh, so it's a lot of attention. And then uh, this attention makes that the uh, dancing becomes much more pleasurable to be here and now and just taste it. In a room of people moving you might have a confluence. It's like two rivers coming into one river. Well, the opposite is true, divergence. Something is together and you split. Attraction, which to me feels very magnetic. It's not a social thing, it's more of a, like a magnetic thing. Where I feel drawn to a person or a place in the room, or I'm passing someone and I feel to touch them. The opposite is also true, repulsion. I might be moving through the space and feel like, not me now, and the next time I come around, I'm attracted. Coincidence. This is noticing same thing, same time. In my warm-up, I'm diving to the floor, and I notice that someone else exactly in that moment is also falling. It could be color. It could be I realize that I'm wearing the same colors as my partner. Your path is crossing someone else's, or theirs is crossing you. You know, I'm moving, and then somebody cuts across behind, but it just gives a little energy. Again, it doesn't mean anything. You don't have to even do anything much about it. Is it close? Is it far? Is it fast? Difference is a form of connection. In the underscore, maybe someone is very involved in the skinosphere. Someone else is very quickly moving through the space, has lots of energy. You start to have a real contrast in the room. Often contrast brings with it a sense of tension. And there's a way in which we, people often feel that tension is a bad thing and should be resolved. 
But if we can perceive the difference as a form of connection, it makes a lot of potential. You have a lot more options if you can feel contrast as a kind of connection. Noticing influence in the room, whether it's between dancers or music or other things that might influence. Sometimes you want to like get energy maybe from the room and you, you are actively using influence to help change your state. From a distance, I feel a special connection to someone's movement or a part of the room or something. But I might not be attracted to get close to it or to go to it. It's just like vibrating with something. You're, you feel it. You feel moved by it. Your path and another person's path is meeting in one point but it doesn't change where you're going. This could be physical or it could be otherwise. Collision is, you could say, a, a subset of touch. This could be physical or it could be also a collision of ideas. This whole thing is what we call grazing which is a series of short connections. You know, like you have a cow or a horse that's in a field and they eat a little bit and then they go over here and they eat a little bit and they go over here. That's grazing. The difference between engagement and grazing is just that grazing connections are so short they don't have a time to develop. The other experiential difference is that when I'm grazing I feel like I'm on my way. Some of this, some of this, some of this. I'm just tasting things, I'm getting stimulated. When I go into engagement, I, there's a commitment. Like, I'm not on my way anywhere else. I've arrived into this until it's over. It's sometimes useful to establish some other kinds of improvised connections with each other, just to have other options in this open score. It's not just a field of, of duos necessarily, it's not a contact jam exactly. So when you're observing, you're still in the underscore, you're not out. Just a different perspective. You really can study it, you can enjoy it, you can observe and re-enter. A sense of the continuity of your life force. You're breathing moment to moment, things are changing. Underneath all of it, you're streaming. So this is a kind of net that will catch you underneath anything else. There's a moment where you don't know what's going on. For some people, this might be like a panic moment. Another day might be liberation. We do have strategies for this. One of them that people do, if you're confused or you don't know what's going on, 
put something familiar in. You don't know what's happening? Here's my favorite movement, I'll just do it. Sometimes you just have to wait a little longer to get a little more information and then you get something about what's going on. In terms of integrating contact improvisation and compositional awareness, it's very helpful within your engagement occasionally to zoom out a little bit and then come back in. This happens by itself, but again, you can play with it. By zooming out, you get a sense of what else is happening in the room. That helps us make other connections and, and have more to work with. The invitation to notice how things are organized, composed at any moment, at any scale. Colors, light, positions, energy, focus. It's just, life is full of, everything is composed always. So this last one is called the idiot button. Idiot button, zero in the zero. And I made this because it feels like we are really working to become so sensitive to so many things that it's almost too much. You're aware of so many things that you're almost paralyzed. Then press the idiot button and this will simplify things. It's an alternative to shutting down. That might mean just go back to arriving energetically physically, streaming. Just a, another reference of this is if you were to take a camera with old style film, to take a picture in a dark room, you would need very sensitive film and keep the aperture open for a long time. If you took that same condition out in this bright sunlight, you would burn the film. And if, if there's a cue like three minutes to final resolution, it it's opens the last chapter of your improvisation. So you take yourself out of that constellation. You don't have to wait for a group decision of ending. You finish, you disengage. And you go directly into reflection or sometimes called harvest. There's a lot going on in this period also. You're resting after hours of dancing. And you're reviewing your experience to see if you have some clear observations of what happened. I meet people that are really passionate about this form of dancing. It's very, very intense and then we all have, have this common passion. And in, in Warsaw, I just like the community, really. I've been here for the fourth, fourth time now and I just like, like the people in the community here. So there was the moment that uh, um, she went to this moment of gap and I was like, ha, huh, I have a gap now. And then after a while, I started to kind of little laugh. And then she said on oh, the very last one, it's like the button of idiot. And I was like, that I was following the score, even sitting, you know, and not knowing that. So that was funny, that even on the mental way, we are kind of following what's going on, even we are not doing this actually. It's amazing. Contact is going everywhere in the world now. And, you know, even four years ago, there were very few people in some places, and now it's exploding. So there's something happening. It's, it's something about like communication and a new way of, of being. Thanks so much for your concentration and participation. Here we go.